Hi folks, how are you going? My name's James, I'm one of the founders of ChargeDesk. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of how our integration with Zendesk works. Um, so you can see here I've logged into my uh, Zendesk account and um, I'm up here looking at my unsolved tickets. I'm just going to go into one of these tickets here. Um, so for example, we've got this ticket here from Ali. Um, he's saying that he's been su subscribed to two scripts at once and needs this fixed up. And you can see on the right, uh, we've got this app loaded up and this is the ChargeDesk application. Um, so we can see that we've got Ali's uh, billing information showing up here. He's got these two subscriptions showing and these recent charges are showing up as well. So this app is basically pulling in contextual information from the ticket. So it's showing Ali's information because we can see that it's got his email address which matches up and also his name matches up as well. Um, we search for a number of metrics uh, but primarily uh, we match based on email address. Um, we also look at things like name and domain name of the email address as well which will do some wider matches if we can't find sort of exact matches for the email address. Um, so on this panel here, we can actually go and manage all of Ali's information. Um, we can drill into the charges by clicking into them. Um, so looking at this failed charge, for example, I can see that this failed because um, the card he attempted to use wasn't supported. He'd used this JBC credit card that wasn't supported in our gateway um, and had to use a Visa, a MasterCard, American Express. Um, so we can kind of see this additional information which will help you to support charges, particularly if people are sort of saying they've got repeated failures. You can use this to help debug the problem. Um, and then additionally, we've got other information here. So for example, you can see this charge here for um, $16 had uh, $11 refunded off it. No, sorry, $5 refunded, so we only have uh, $11 remaining on it. Um, and this information all shows up here as well. And then of course we've got the subscriptions as well. Um, so in this case, we can see that Ali does have two subscriptions being refunded, uh, being uh, currently processed. Um, so we can see that he's got this $5 subscription as well as the $16, and this, this one's probably an error. And we can just go ahead and immediately uh, cancel the subscription. This is going off in real time uh, to your payment gateway and, and cancelling it, so then you get immediate feedback um, as to success. You can see this being cancelled. Um, we can also go ahead and uh, refund charges as well. So I'm going to refund this $6 charge, which was for this subscription. And that's gone through. Um, and so we can click through and we can see that it's now refunded. Um, if we want to, we can pull up an invoice for the charge. Um, and this invoice is going to show us um, uh, basically the details of it. We can see that it's been refunded. Um, so we can send this to the, uh, to the customer if we want. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a great way to easily manage payments. Um, Say if uh, we obviously have Ali's information showing up here, but say we were looking for some additional information, say we wanted to look at another customer's information, um, we might want to look for sort of Richard, for example. Um, we can bring his information up as well by going to the search field. And you can see here, the same as with Ali, uh, the charges are grouped under the customer. Um, so there's no complexity here in terms of looking, uh, trying to figure out the difference between charges and customers. It all just becomes nicely grouped together. Um, and again, we have uh, reasons for failure available here. Just going back to Ali for a second, um, if we drill down into Ali's account information, uh, we can see that it's bringing up uh, additional information here, such as the billing address. So if this is provided uh, within uh, the payment gateway, so if you take in information like billing address and shipping address, you can actually access this stuff now from inside Zendesk. So this is really useful if you're helping, to, if you're looking to sort of, uh, uh, you know, provide shipping details and manage your customers directly without leaving uh, Zendesk. Um, I'll just go back to my uh, list of uh, open tickets here. Um, and I might go to a different ticket. Um, for example, we're looking at a different one here for, from Mike Judge. And again, it's brought up his billing information. Um, another way to look at this would be to, if we actually go to the customer page, um, so I'm bringing up Mike's customer information. And again, we can show that this shows up here on the right. So it's contextually finding who we're viewing in the current page and bringing up their related billing information. Um, if we wanted to, um, we can actually create new charges on account. On an account, so if they have a current card on file, um, and say we wanted to process um, sort of a ten dollar charge, um, we'll call it for file uh, file compression. I can go and process this, and this is going away and immediately processing this in the gateway. And you can see it's come up straight away. We've got the information here. We can see the last four digits of the credit card was processed on. Um, we've even got an invoice that will be generated for the payment. And this is all happening in real time. So it's going off and actually charging the card um, live through the gateway. 
and this is all instantaneous as well so you get immediate feedback um, it's really quick it makes it really fast to manage your customers um, we're finding that uh, the work for improvements for some of our large customers has really made a dramatic improvement to them um, you know, can basically manage all their customers with inside with inside Zendesk, um, and they can provide different permission levels for each of their agents as well. So if they want some agents to only have read-only access instead of uh, the ability to update charges, and that's also available. And that's it. That's a quick overview of our charge desk integration. Uh, for Zendesk. Um, we're always rolling out new features. Uh, shortly we'll bring out the ability to uh, send invoices to customers. So if they don't have a card currently on file, you can actually create a new invoice for the customer and ask them to create a payment for you. Um, and that will go through your payment gateways. So that'll be rolling out really shortly. Um, but if you have any other, any other feedback or any of the questions, feel free to shoot us an email at contact at chargedesk.com and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.